Hi, it's Gary here. Um, I'm here at Staunch, uh, which is the after party for uh, Peaches Christ and Jigs Monsoon's uh, Grey Gardens show. Um, we're going to get a bit of a chance to have a look at some um, of the drag queens, including our own goddess Grace, and also hopefully we're getting a bit of an interview with uh, Jinx and Peaches Christ and talking about how um, film and queer cinema and camp cinema has influenced uh, their lives and their stage show. I'll get back so that we get the nice. Do you, yeah, you have a favorite? Just as high as possible. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, flip that screen around and I'll like. Okay, Tell me know. when you look, when you're happy. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's love great. Of course it is. Hi. Here she cool. is, this fucking wow. Violet Blood. Look at Violet <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I'm a Hi, Madonna. Madonna, why would you say it's maybe the staunchest woman in the whole of history? It's me, Madonna. <laughs> 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 what happened to her? What happened to her? So I wanted to ask you a question about um, Grey Gardens. Mm -hmm. And I know that Jinx, one of her favourite films is Death Becomes Her. So yes. one of my questions that I wanted to ask you was, what is so appealing to gay men especially about women who are stuck together like Grey Gardens, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, mm -hmm. and Death Becomes Her. Thelma Why do, Louise. and Thelma Louise, yeah. what is with like women who are stuck together that is so appealing to we gay men especially? Lesbians. No, um, <laughs> I think that, well, we do love lesbians, but I think also uh, the, the women that you're talking about um, tend to be like, well, staunch. Staunch, and exactly. Sort of strong, stoic, uh, funny, witty you know, um, outrageous, um, eccentric women. So I think queer men, especially in the case of Grey Gardens, watched that movie with a different lens. Mm. You know, a lot of people watched it like they were going to a circus freak show and there was sort of this behind the curtain reveal of, um, it was like an exploitation film. Like, look at how, you know, filthy they are. Whereas queer men uh, went to that movie and actually identified to some degree with two women, a mother and daughter, who said, like, fuck you, uh, we're living however we can and doing, you know, the best we can, and we've kind of turned our nose up at society, who's basically betrayed us and, yeah, so, like, and left us. And so I think little Edie especially is so witty and so smart and so funny, and she likes fashion. I mean, even with nothing, you know, her old clothes, she's still, like, turning skirts upside down and making them work and putting on an outfit, and I think Queer men, especially, are survivors in that way. We learn to adapt mm -hmm. to uh, you know, a, a, a world that kind of has said, like, hey, uh, this isn't the way to be. You shouldn't be like this. So I love Grey Gardens in particular because, depending on the audience it has, you can either watch it like a piece of exploitation or you can watch it and really fall in love with these two people that, you know, are lovably tragic in a way. It's about checking the behavior and then going, it's okay that that behavior happens and appreciating that and seeing it in yourself. Yeah, why as shouldn't well. we? I why think queer people exactly? in general are less judgmental about that sort of yeah, thing, yeah. you know? And there's less snickering and more empathy. Can I ask you a question about, obviously you've done loads of stuff like uh, you've uh, like realized your dream about like putting on Showgirls the fucking musical, which is fantastic. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you have a character in, a, you know, in film that you really want to play? Besides Crystal Connors? <laughs> of course, yeah. Big Edie? <laughs> um, let me think about that for a minute. I think so many of them I've been able to um, do, I've been able to perform uh, over the years. I'm trying to think of one that I haven't. Um, I definitely love um, Elizabeth Taylor, and we've never really done a proper Elizabeth Taylor movie, mm. um, mostly because I feel like so, to some degree they're so good, yeah, yeah. but the ones that are so campy are um, lesser known, like the movie Boom is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen it, check it out. You'll, you'll uh, thank me later. But um, yeah, I would love to play Elizabeth Taylor's role in something like Suddenly Last Summer. Yeah, yes. But I have to be a lot younger and a lot thinner. <laughs> oh, okay. You know. but, <laughs> or silly. Elizabeth Taylor in um, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Yes, you know? that would be brilliant. I, I mean, Jinx totally could play that, that part perfectly. Yes. Jinx, Jinx could play Jinx. Shut up! <laughs> Jinx could be Richard Burton, why the fuck not? <laughs> Jinx. Jinx and I kind of do no, sorry, that is not the introduction that I wanted. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Jinx. Is she gonna 
cut me? No, no, no. Okay. She's, <laughs> I think she's lovely. Yeah, of course she is. She's and, brilliant. And, in fact, we play two characters who have been performing the same show for 40 years. Well, when we started doing the show, you know, like, it was three years ago. So, we, we are, it's coming true. So, um, you know, it's like we, we are becoming those two characters in some ways. We're stuck together. <laughs> One of the things that I really uh, enjoyed about, um, as, like at the end of the performance that you did tonight, uh, Jinx did this amazing sort of speech about how much she fucking loved you, basically, <laughs> <laughs> which is so true. Um, which was about like how you were living, like Peaches let you live your dreams of when you were 14. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, <coughs> we haven't just done Great Gardens. Yeah. Peaches has been gracious enough. You've done quite a lot, haven't you? Starring roles in quite a few of her shows, like I gotten to do um, a Drop Dead Gorgeous. I Did you do Hocus Pocus? Role, so? Ellen Barkin's role in Drop Dead Gorgeous. I played um, Sarah Jessica Parker's role in Hocus Pocus. I, I played Joan Cusack's role <laughs> in Adam's Family Values. And these are some of the most important movies to me. Yeah, yeah. And Peach has not only like invited me to be a part of it, but gave me like you know awesome roles to do in it. So yeah, she's like she's a pillar in our community, and I don't just mean that sarcastically she's actually like uh, mm -hmm. she's uh, she made a name for herself before there was a tv show centered around our art form mm. and that says a lot about her conviction and her her, her will that kind of sounds hitlerish i didn't <laughs> hitlerish it's a, the power of her will but yeah very much so um peaches wrote mein kampf and, uh, <laughs> Fantastic. But you know what she said, which I actually was thinking about while she said it during the speech at the end. She said, um, she gives us Rue girls. And I was thinking, well, not really, because yes, I have cast some Rue girls. Hmm. I've also cast Tecolina, Coco Peru, tons of people. Yeah, the exactly. reality of it is, I do love the girls on TV, but I'm very selective about who mm. they are. And so only the people that have inspired me. Like, you know, if you go on Drag Race, doesn't mean necessarily that we can all do a show together because it's a very special queen that can kind of like do that kind of um, theatrical performance and channel that kind of like camp or comedy. Yeah. Really it's all about like channeling an audience's love of something um, that we, we share in common. You've got that acting chops basically as well. Yeah, well I said that Rue Girls comment because let's face it, you know, Peaches was doing it, like I said, before Drag Race mm. was a thing. And there are a handful of queens who worked their asses off way before there was a TV show about drag. And some of those queens have chosen to be bitter. And some of those queens have decided like, hey, just because, just because they took this route to doing what we all do doesn't mean they don't care just as much. And I feel like that's a really special thing that Peaches does is she says, yeah, you, you went on mainstream television and you made drag a mainstream thing, but you should still come do these underground counterculture things with me because she can see it within us. And it's cool. I, I make time to do a Peaches show every year because it's that rewarding of an experience. Yeah. And we don't always go to the UK like this. I've been doing this show for oh, no. three years and we've just been performing in shitholes. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I've, been Thank for I've been wondering what, why am I doing this? <laughs> well, we are usually performing in cinemas, which is yeah. it's a very challenging thing. Oh, yeah. So when we get to perform in like a real theater, it's really nice. But the nice yeah. thing is it seats a lot of people and you would be amazed. Like these are young people coming to see a Grey Gardens parody show. Yeah. Not all of them know what Grey Gardens is, but they're going to see our show, go home and look it up on YouTube or rent it or whatever. And I think drag queens are a little bit like um, the hobos in Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> you know, like we keep certain masterpieces alive. <laughs> you okay. know, so even though these young kids, they don't know everything about Judy Garland or Betty Davis or Jenny Crawford or Holy shit. That's Judy, Judy on the door, I think. Like, oh. Stop talking <laughs> about Stop talking. <laughs> lies. Uh, um, I you, James. I don't drink gin, gin for jinx? I mean, in a pinch, but. Oh, well, I, brought, I brought gin because I've the gin from here. How <laughs> familiar thing. And 
she was right in the middle of giving a professional interview. She was doing a fucking <laughs> dog, Chad and Gorgeous. It was like a $3 Jim interview, for jinx. too. Jim for Jinx. It was like that sounds like a charity. Almost, Jim for Jinx. She almost convinced the home viewing audience. <laughs> she was so I need it so home viewing. <laughs> I've got the Jim for Jinx. Let me ask the no question, way. like when Chad oh, burst man, in. What do you think of these wonderful bitches that are in Manchester, these Manchester Queens, hashtag Manchester Queens that they call themselves, like the amazing. What do we sporty. think of them? Yeah, yeah. The biggest word I can Bugger. use is... Booger. They're amazing. Bitter. Fantastic. Um, uh, you know, I, I just found them very captivating because I I followed these girls on social media mm -hmm. and thanks to Beaches now and finally working with them, you know, and um, so I knew what they looked like in drag, but I didn't know their demeanors. So during the rehearsal process, I got to just know these people as the artists who create the drag personas. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny because Licorice Black does this thing where she like rehearses like this with like just <laughs> a dead look on her face. <laughs> but she's doing all the steps perfectly, oh but she goes like, oh. oh my god. And it's kind of, it's captivating. Well, just. It's captivating. <laughs> it is. I, I told her she performs like that. I she mean, does. rehearses like and that. What rehearses she like that. She said, oh, I'm not going to I can't understand a word any of these people. Uh, well, Me neither. Mm -hmm. And I'm from Lancashire. It's like, speak English. <laughs> <laughs> what is Lancashire? Is it exactly. the county? That is the county. It's oh, like the okay. state of okay. where you are. Yeah, exactly. So confusing. Poor Matt Lister. I don't know if you heard, but he's from Leeds. Yeah. And everyone boo! Yeah, if you if you if, if you ain't from this town, you're getting a boo. So poor Matt Lister. Thank you. Oh, no, and from Manchester. No, I'm just no, I no. don't understand because when I'm in San Francisco and she goes and Jinx is from Seattle, people don't go start going, Fuck you! Uh, Fuck you die, you stupid cunt! <laughs> you're from Seattle! You're from Seattle, you stupid fucking Oh, they were very doing it again. No, but it's <laughs> you're far enough away to get distance, I think. Like <laughs> when you're so close, when you're an hour away on a train, you hate each other. Yeah, really? <laughs> Maybe. I yeah. guess that for us would be like San Jose. Exactly. I mean, you all sound like weirdos to me, so I don't oh, know why you're fighting. <laughs> Are we late for our show? Sure. We have a show. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank Give us you. a wave at Make a Scene. Thank you. Bye, Make a Scene. Bye. 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 Peaches in control. You're gonna cram into my theater like a fist in a hole. When you see what I'm about to show you, and it comes in a pan, you're gonna feel a little shiver. I got knives on my hands. I got rhinestones on my neck. I got spiders in my fur. Got my eyebrows painted on, and I'm about to skirt. 